Hi, I'm Ray from the Radio Workshop, where I repair and restore vintage valve radios from the 1940s. My amateur radio call sign is Golf 4 November Sierra Juliet. Welcome to yet another podcast. It's quite something to think back to the 1950s when we had one television channel, BBC. That was it. It wasn't BBC One because there was only one channel. There's no need to call it BBC One. It was the BBC. That was it. TV wasn't on all day. Didn't start till, what was it, five o'clock, I think, in the afternoon. And that was children's hour. Five to six, an hour of kids' programmes, which was Andy Pandy and (laughs) the wooden tops. I used to like the wooden tops when I was a kid. Then ITV came along, so there were two channels to choose from. People actually had a choice. And then, of course, in the 60s, BBC Two came along, so there were three channels. With radio, there was also very, very little choice initially. 40s, 50s, even into the 60s, there was the BBC Home Service, uh, the BBC Third Programme and the BBC Light Programme. That was it. Apart from Luxembourg, of course. Now, I remember listening to Luxembourg at night, 208, medium wave. That was the only entertainment, really, radio-wise, that I suppose kids, early teens and teenagers had, even into 20s. People listened to Luxembourg, but it was only available at night because of propagation and stuff. You couldn't hear it in the daytime. And of course, in those days, in the 60s, everyone had a transistor radio. I reckon 90% of homes had a transistor radio on the kitchen windowsill. 90 or 100% of homes that had teenage kids They had radios in their bedrooms. If you had two kids, they had a radio each in their bedrooms. I remember my first radio. How old was I? About 10, I think, 10 years old. Got a transistor radio for my birthday. Fantastic. I tuned around. You could hear foreign stations, but mainly Radio Luxembourg. Apart from Luxembourg, there was a huge void. There was just no real choice apart from the three BBC stations and Luxembourg. That was it. There was no other choice. So, of course, the pirate ships came along. Radio London, Radio Caroline, Swinging Radio England, Laser. There were loads of them. And, of course, that completely changed radio. Absolutely, completely. And the thing is, what everyone thought at the time, this was going to change radio forever. It did for a while. But then it seems everything sort of slipped back into the old ways. My son said recently, whichever station I tune into on FM on my car radio, they all sound the same. You can't listen to one for a few minutes and think, oh, that's radio and -and so-and-so. Or you can't listen to another one and think, oh, yeah, that's radio ABC or whatever it is. They all sound the same. And the reason, I suppose, for that is they're probably all owned by the same company or a couple of different companies anyway. And they've all got their standard format, their standard way of doing things. So you can't really tell the difference between any of the radio stations. Of course, going back to the pirates in the 60s, they were all completely different. You know, the DJs, well, we have DJs now, I know. They play records, well, they don't. They press a button for the computer to play music. We have DJs now, they're okay, they chat, but they're so restricted. They've got their format, they must strictly follow the format, they can't deviate at all. Whereas in the 60s, with the pirates, they couldn't just do what they liked. They, they didn't swear and things like that. But it was more of a, a live show. You felt in those days that the DJs were were talking to you. I felt that I knew Kenny Everett. I'd wait for the Kenny Everett show to come on, and it was fantastic. I just felt that a lot of the time he was talking to me like I was the only listener, whereas these days it just seems to be so bland. I think the best way to describe it is the DJs were part of the entertainment. It wasn't just the music that was the entertainment. But equally, the DJs, they were entertaining, especially Kenny Everett, people like that. Tony Blackburn was brilliant on the pirate ships. I remember at the beginning of one of his shows, he said, if you know where something is, it isn't lost, is it? Which is fair enough. No, it's not. And he said, I was bringing a record, a new record aboard the ship when I dropped it. It's at the bottom of the North Sea. So it's not lost, is it? Now, what that sort of thing did was put an image in your mind, a picture of Tony Blackburn getting out of the the tender or whatever it is, trying to get aboard the ship, perhaps going up a a ladder on the side of the ship with his bag or whatever, dropping this record in the sea. You know, the waves are are lapping up against the side of the ship. It gave you that picture. Also, when they were 
on board ship, they tell you about the weather. You know, the boat would be rocking. Sorry, is it a boat or a ship? It's a ship, isn't it? It would be rocking. And the stylus on the, on the record decks, the stylus would slide across the record. So they'd say, hang on a minute, I've got to find a two bob bit or half a crown, as the money was in those days. Bit of chewing gum, stick it on top of the arm just above the cartridge to give it extra weight so it wouldn't slide across the record as the ship rolled. They're always coming out with jokes and quips and things, especially when there were two DJs. If Kenny Everett had someone else in the studio, for example, their sort of banter together was amazing. I know these days that there are very often two people on radio shows, but it doesn't seem to work. Not for me, anyway, the way it used to back in the early days. It doesn't seem to work. Just going back to television for a minute, it was in the 50s that ITV started. So we then had BBC and ITV. And that was quite a thing because obviously ITV had adverts, which made a great change. It was very interesting. Of course, it wasn't long before people got fed up with the adverts. They went out to put the kettle on and make tea during the commercial break. So we then had two television channels. I remember on BBC TV, there was Watch With Mother, where uh, young ones, little toddlers, could watch the TV with their mum. As far as the radio was concerned, on, uh, I forget which programme, was it the BBC Home Service or the Light programme? They had Listen With Mother. So you could listen to stories, you know, that young toddlers could listen to stories with their mums. It was calm, perhaps I'm old fashioned, but it was calm then. TV was calm. The wooden tops didn't shout at each other. It all seems to be shouting now, all the adverts these days, people shout at you. I don't know why they have to do that. Surely you don't need to shout to get a point across, I don't know. There we are, as I say, perhaps I'm just old fashioned. I remember hearing that in America, in places like New York, Los Angeles, they had dozens of channels. And that was quite incredible. You, you know, you think dozens of channels, what on earth can they watch? You know, what's, what's all this about when we had our two channels? And of course in the sixties, BBC Two came along. And that was on UHF, not the old VHF 405 lines telly, but uh, 625 UHF. So it was a far better quality picture. And I do remember one thing about BBC Two. Saturdays it was, they had the midnight movie every Saturday night. And people would stay up just to watch the midnight movie. Because remember then, or you probably can't remember if you weren't there, but back then in the 60s, there was no video recorders or anything like that not in the early days. So if you wanted to watch a program, you had to be there at that day and at that time. There was no catch up channel or any way of playing it back or any way of seeing it. If the program's on at 7 p.m. and you miss it, that's it, hard luck. You have to wait for the repeats to come out, which the BBC were usually pretty good at, dare I say. Monday mornings were quite interesting in the radio and TV workshop where I worked because they'd have on ITV every Monday morning all the new adverts, just advert after advert. And that was for the companies, for the people to have a look at before the adverts were actually went on air properly. So the directors or whoever of the company, say a toothpaste company, XYZ toothpaste, they could watch their advert and then say, yeah, that's, that's great, that's what we want. Or no, that's dreadful. So Monday mornings in the workshop were quite interesting, watching all the new adverts come out. Colour TV, of course, came out in the 60s, which was great. But none of this, all these extra TV channels, well, I say all these extra, then we had three by then, then we had colour. But none of this took away from radio at all. all that, what's that record? Video killed the radio star. It didn't in those days. Radio was still a big thing. Radio was massive. Even now, most people in their car, their only entertainment they've got is the radio. I know you can listen to the radio on your phone where you've got, say, what, up to, up to 50,000 stations from around the world on internet radio. You can put that into your car system, but of course then you're using your phone data. In this country, at least, we can't get internet in the car, so we can't listen to all these radio stations. We're still stuck with uh, FM, and of course medium and long wave. I don't think anyone uses those in the car anymore. I listen to BBC Five Live sometimes on medium wave and Radio Caroline on medium wave in the car on 648 kilohertz, which is pretty good. But all the stations mainly are on FM. And of course, if they do try to close down medium wave and FM transmitters, then we will only have DAB, 
which is fair enough, I suppose, but a lot of people don't have DAB radios in their cars. So that's another massive change in the future that I don't know whether that's a good thing or not. And of course, DAB, the quality isn't as good as FM. I won't go into that now because there are various arguments about that. A friend of mine happened to mention the other day that on his drive to work, which is only sort of a 10 minute drive, but he said very often he won't hear a record on the radio station. He won't hear one piece of music because it's adverts, it's talking, then they have phone calls with listeners, blah, blah, blah. How's your cat today? Oh yes, he's a lot better now. And he said, I, I like to hear the music. You know, I don't want phone calls about someone's cat who's not been very well and has now recovered. I don't want all this chat, advert after advert after advert, shouting at him. And he said that quite often he's got to work and not heard one record on the radio. And that is a very sad state of affairs. That would never have happened in the old days. When Radio 1 started in the 1960s, Tony Blackburn opened the first show on this new radio station, which was basically the light programme, the BBC light programme, and they renamed it Radio 1. This was to combat the pirates, or rather, hey, the hope to replace the pirates. Tony Blackburn did his best with what he had, which wasn't much, to be honest. He couldn't play all the records, all the music he wanted to play because of a thing called needle time. Now, in those days, the BBC, as well as other radio stations, have to pay royalties on all the music they play. So to keep the cost down, the BBC called it needle time. That was the stylus time, really. Uh, how long, how many hours a day you're playing actual records and you've got to pay the royalties on. So to combat this, the BBC had what they called the Northern Dance Orchestra, which I think was a BBC setup. It was part of their setup. And Tony Blackburn would say, and now the latest one from the Beatles, I want to hold your hand by the Northern Dance Orchestra. And then you've got this, it was dreadful. You've got, the, you've got the Northern Dance Orchestra, the NDO, playing I Want to Hold Your Hand by the Beatles. And it was just rubbish. It was just absolute rubbish. I mean, I remember people laughing when we first heard about this NDO on the radio. People were laughing. It wasn't Tony Blackburn's fault. He had to go with the format. That was it. He had to do what he was told. And this, this was the problem. The radio stations then and now they had a playlist, they had to play certain records, they couldn't play this one, they must play that one. And as I say, a lot of them on Radio 1 were by the NDO, this Northern Dance Orchestra, who were very good, but you can't expect an orchestra to play the latest number one hit record on the radio, it just doesn't work. Going back to the 60s and the pirate ships, that instigated a load of land-based pirate stations. Now, when I say land-based, probably more like bedroom-based. Nerds, people like me, that were capable of building transmitters and putting up aerials and setting up all the audio gear, they'd start their own radio stations in their bedrooms or the garden shed or wherever. So, of course, on Sunday mornings, especially Sunday mornings, you tune around medium wave. There were lots of different radio stations, all these pirates, all the land-based pirates, as well as the ships, of course. The GPO did their best. They were the authority then. It's now Ofcom. The GPO did their best to go around catching these pirates and prosecuting them. But uh, as soon as one disappeared, uh, another two popped up. I remember one station near to me. Uh, I listened to him every Sunday morning. I don't know where he was. I didn't know him myself. He called his station Radio Fish and Chips. Was it where the fish is better and the chips are bigger or something? <laughs> but it worked. It was fantastic listening to his radio station. Radio fish and chips, I mean, makes you feel hungry, doesn't it? Youngsters have said to me, how could you ever listen to medium wave, all that crackling and interference? In fact, only last night down here on the south coast of the UK where I am, we had a massive thunderstorm quite nearby and I was tuning around on medium wave and the static, the crashes, all this, oh, it's just fantastic to listen to. You might think this is daft, but you could barely hear the radio stations because of the static. What's happened now, I mean, okay, that's the extreme, but what's happened now is radio is too clinical. All this digital stuff, CDs, it's all too clinical and crisp and basically horrible. The music on medium wave is far from hi-fi quality, obviously. It's pretty good on FM, but on, on DAB and 
these dreadful radio stations that that have all this processing and goodness knows what they do to the audio. It's just too clinical. It just doesn't sound normal to me. It doesn't sound real. And it's such a shame. And as I said earlier, they don't play records anymore. DJs, were the term comes from disc jockey, as you probably know. And they played the discs, which were the records. And it was great fun because sometimes they put the record on the turntable upside down. So they play the B side and not the A side. That made it real. It made it human. It brought things to life. You know, they make mistakes. It was good fun. They'd laugh and the audience, you know, we'd laugh. It, it just brought the whole thing to life. So there we are. We now have hundreds of TV channels. We've got, uh, what is it? I said 50,000 radio stations, internet wise, uh, around the world, internet stations. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen to proper radio, real radio, where you've got a, like a transistor radio where you receive a signal rather than all this internet stuff. I don't know what's going to happen to radio. I suppose eventually long wave and medium wave will die out. FM will probably disappear. I think the the die hard hi-fi fanatics, or not even fanatics, I mean I like listening to FM. It's decent quality on a good amp with good speakers. FM is brilliant. But I suppose that will go and we'll end up with DAB as the only choice, there will, yes, there will be no choice, that will be it, DAB, or internet. Actually, some internet stations now, I was reading the other day, they are putting out better quality than DAB. So there's a thing. I reckon long term, it'll all go internet, DAB will disappear. It'll all be internet. And the day we can receive the internet in our cars, I think that will be the, the turning point. I talk about transistor radios, of course there are now portable DAB radios with rechargeable batteries. So at least we've gone back to that stage where you can carry a radio out into the garden and listen to music like we used to with transistor radios. We'd take them down to the beach or out into the country on a picnic or wherever. You know, you have your transistor radio with you. I suppose at least now DAB radios are becoming portable. They seem to have solved the huge drain on the battery problem where the radio would only last an hour or two then the battery needs recharging that's been put right I, I believe but even so on DAB they say oh, all these radio stations massive choice no that's not a massive choice compared with the amount of radio stations on the internet 50 odd thousand around the world what is it you get on DAB 50 stations perhaps I don't know I haven't listened to it for ages perhaps there are 50 stations that's not that's not a massive choice. A massive choice is 50,000 on the internet. OK, going back to the 60s, our massive choice then was, I don't know how many stations on medium wave, perhaps a dozen, let's say 12, 15 stations, if you include the Pirates and the rest of it, Radio Luxembourg. But the difference was the quality. The quality of the radio stations in those days, I think, was far superior to the stuff they put out now. OK, well, thanks for listening. I think I'll end the podcast here. There's not much more to say about it. Radio as it was, as it is now, and whatever the future holds, I don't know. And TV, of course. Uh, several people now don't have television channels as such. They have, what is it, uh, these other things? I don't know what it all is. But they don't actually have TV channels. They have all these other bits and pieces. So I don't know where that's going to go. They are saying that the day will come when you won't have a, a TV in the lounge, you know, the main TV. It's going to be other forms of viewing or whatever. We shall see. Happy days, the 60s. Happy radio stations. Great music. And now you're thinking, silly old... <laughs> Maybe I am a silly old... But it was good. It was fantastic. Thanks for listening. Look out for the next podcast. Bye-bye for now.